Do I have to be baptized? Now listen to me, I'm gonna say no and yes, and if that's frustrating for you, I get it, just hear me out. The Bible is overwhelmingly clear that salvation is by grace alone through faith alone. For example, Ephesians 2.8 says it this way, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. Also, we have in Romans chapter four, verses 24 through 25, it says this in context, that uh, our faith will be counted to us as righteousness who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Now listen, there's no mention of baptism in either of those passages. It's clear we are once again saved by God's grace alone, through our faith alone, in the person and work of Jesus alone, what we know as the good news of the gospel. So baptism isn't a factor in the equation of salvation. So you think my answer to the question, do I have to be baptized, would always be, nah, you don't. But I don't think that's the best answer here. Listen to Jesus' commissioning of his followers in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Here's what it says. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now Jesus tells his followers to go and make disciples. You might call them fully devoted followers of Jesus. You might call them Christians. Now, how does Jesus say to do that? Well, after someone believes the gospel, the first thing they're to do before they're even taught how to grow in following Jesus is to be baptized. This text shows us the very first step of obedience to Jesus after becoming a follower of Jesus is, get this, it's baptism. We see this in the beginning of the first church in Acts chapter two. After hearing and believing the gospel message preached by Peter, Acts 2.41 records this. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Baptism is the first thing those folks did after what? After believing the gospel. In fact, we see this pattern throughout the rest of the New Testament. Why? Because baptism symbolizes an individual's profession of faith in Christ. It's like they're saying, hey everyone, I'm now a follower of Jesus. And it's also a sign and a seal of that person's entrance into the new covenant community that we know as the church. So you're kind of saying this, hey everyone, I want to enter in this community of faith now. Now, that's very helpful for those of us who might think that getting baptized is, um, it's optional. Hear me out. If Jesus believes baptism is this initial step of following him, then it's kind of silly to say it's optional. And frankly, it's nonsensical. It's equivalent to saying, hey, look, Jesus, I know you think you know what a follower of Jesus should look like, but let me tell you, you're wrong. Now, I know that sounds far-fetched for a disciple to talk like that to Jesus, because in receiving the gospel, they're saying that they want to follow Jesus, but somehow they want to pass on the very first thing Jesus asked them to do. I mean, hey, Lord, <laughs> I know I want to follow you. What do I need to do? Be baptized? No, that's okay. I don't want to do that. Now, you tell me. Is that person really a follower of Jesus? I'll just say this, I wouldn't want to be that person. It's not only an unbiblical response, it's a nonsensical one. Hey, I want to be your follower, but I really don't want to follow you. Well, what's up with that? See, that's why, save the thief on the cross who was, let's just say, preoccupied at the time, there are no unbaptized Christians in the New Testament and virtually none throughout church history. That's because an unbaptized Christian is clearly an oxymoron. It's saying two opposite things. I'm a follower of Jesus who has chosen not to follow Jesus. And the very first thing that he's asked me to do, which frankly is to simply identify myself as one of his followers and be a part of the community of believers. And it's for those reasons that in a broader light, I think the question, do I have to be baptized? I think the answer really is yes. Not because baptism saves you, but because... The saved, when they hear and understand the first command of Jesus, they, they want to be baptized. It's simply because they seek to obey the one who they now call their Lord and King. So, do I have to be baptized? You tell me.